lovely people welcome back to my channel and to another episode of handheld recap and we're going to be taking a look at the fantastic the wonderful retroid pocket 2 oh yeah but i thought we take a look at another one as well while we're at it we're going to do a longer video of this one in another handheld recap but to get the whole kind of story of the Retroid Pocket 2, you've got to start with this one, haven't you? Oh yeah, the one I call the Stormtrooper. Named by my dear friend Nate, who gave this to me in the first place. Yeah, it's another machine that came all the way from North America, guys, when my dear, dear friend Nate sent it to me. Yep, yeah, this is the original Retroid Pocket. The first one, guys. As you can see, it is a chunky monkey, and it is definitely the colours of a stormtrooper. Fantastic size screen on it. I mean, look at that. This machine was already gorgeous then. And yes, it did have the dual boot thing going, where you could use the Retroid OS, or you could go onto Android. So yeah, even back then, guys, they had that. Only one stick, like I said, not two like on the Retroid Pocket 2. A fantastic D-pad and all these buttons here guys. The usual things, the A, B, C, D, Y, N, X and all that. And the home select start. But like I said guys, we're going to take a better look at this in another yeah, recap video. But you can see guys, this was the original Retroid Pocket. The very first one. Yeah, absolutely fantastic looking thing. But like I said, we can't really waste too much time on this one, can we? No, we can't. So we're going to put him aside and then we're going to pull this one in, guys. Yeah, this is a Retroid Pocket 2. And what a wonderful machine it is. This one is the black one. Yeah, the kind of like bug standard black one. As you can see, guys, like I said, two sticks on this one. Then you got this wonderful D-pad, home select and start, stereo speakers at the bottom there. Then you got A, B, Y and X again. On this one, unlike the uh, first model guys, you do have some wonderful, and I mean wonderful, shoulder buttons just like that. But yeah, again guys, I'm not going to waste too much time on this one. You know why? Because I've got another one of these and it's beautiful. Again. From my dear friend Nate, he sent me this one as well. So we're going to put him aside and then we're going to take a better look at the Retroid Pocket 2 with this absolutely fantastic purple one, guys. This is the clear purple. In other words, what I mean is you can see all the innards, even though it's a purple. This is yet the purple fantasticness itself with the red, yellow, green and blue action buttons so yeah these are fantastic buttons guys and then you have your two d pads again it's exactly the same as the black model just in an absolutely fantastic atomic purple where you can see all the innards like the look there you go guys you can see the flipping uh all the different bits and bobs inside like the older yeah, what's holding your screen in, guys? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. You've got Home, Select, Start. There, again, obviously, your D-pad. And there we go. Yeah, what an awesome-looking colour. The Atomic Purple is beautiful. And then, guys, again, on the top, you've got the shoulder buttons, which are black. Not Atomic Purple, but black. Very, very clicky indeed and what i love about them guys is that the way they sit securely on your uh, fingers you got no grip here but you know it's got a nice bit of texture to it that keeps it in place absolutely gorgeous looking thing it really is 
Then let's turn it around this way. Here we have the usual stuff, guys. You have a micro uh, HDMI cable. So yeah, you can plug this one into the TV, guys, and play it over the TV. You got your C charger port. You got your um, volume, which is lovely to actually have a rocker. And then you got your uh, standby and on and off there. Then on this side, guys, not much at all. In fact, nothing. Nothing on that side either. And then underneath, guys, you've got your headphone jack and you've got your TF card. In other words, where you put your uh, micro SD card. And you can put up to literally a terabyte into this if you wanted to. Right, let's go into N64. There we go. So here's a, a list of all the games that are on here. Obviously, you've got Mario 64 and all that. Now, N64 games are notoriously hard to emulate, as we all know. So as you can see, guys, there is loads and loads of games on here. Lots and lots of them. Not exactly a ton, but there's quite a few of the most popular ones, as you can see. Wonderful. But let's come back out of there. Because, yeah, that is that one, guys. Obviously, you can see how fantastic this looks. The games on it are wonderful. Play wonderful. What we're going to do is we're going to go back on to the black one and turn it on and show you a bit more of that one again. So, right, going from one to the other, guys. I know, getting confusing, isn't it? Yeah. But here we go, guys. Let's go into this one. He says, press the right button. That helps. Right. As you can see, guys, we have a retro arch here. So, yeah, retro arch is there. You've also got uh, the good old emulation um, Game Boy. Right, so here we are, guys. We have all these babies on here. We've got, uh, obviously, retro arch, which covers all the different emulation devices. And then we have... The uh, duck station. So yeah, here we go with the menu up on the Atomic Purple version. I mean, this is a beautiful looking machine. Um, I should really show you some gameplay, but I can't at the moment because none of these have got any SD cards in them and no games loaded on. Um, unfortunately, I've been using the SD cards for other machines, but at least you're getting to see how beautiful this machine actually looks once it's on and running and then looking around this atomic purple one guys is just beautiful i mean look at the back of it here where you can see all the ribbon cables you can see the battery oh it's just fantastic looking thing it really is it's gorgeous and i tell you what when it is up and running it plays like a flipping dream it really really does and uh, you know the black one is already fantastic but for me, this is the killer of them all because of these buttons, guys. The buttons are just beautiful looking. The red and yellow on that, guys, is, like I said earlier, it's just fantastic. The two sticks. The one big downside where the Retro Pocket 2 Plus came in is that it's not a touchscreen. That is not a touchscreen, guys. You are doing it purely by your D-pad. Or by a mouse. And what I mean by that, guys, is let's get the uh, black one back in. Right, here's the black one. We have a slightly different layout here, as you can see. But yeah, it is fantastic. And here is the mouse that I was talking about. So you would hover over things that you want to choose, whether it's Retro Arch or Duck Station or Play Store or whatever, guys, whatever it is you want to do you would then use the mouse to do it. Um, so yeah, it's a bloody shame I haven't got any games on either of these machines, but you can see the difference there. I mean, obviously on the Atomic Purple one, uh, it's using the D-pad. You can bring up the mouse, of course, or the pointer as they call it, and uh, yeah, and use it like that. But it's a shame that they didn't think on at the time and made a touch screen. It is the way of the world these days, and it does make things a lot easier, especially when you're talking Android. I mean, we're all used to Android B 
being on touch screens and uh, here you go guys this is a pure example of it you know everything's that little bit slower because it's so much quicker to just go and tap it isn't it so yeah everything's a little bit slower using a pointer like this and even the d-pad guys it is a lot quicker than a d-pad to just use your bloody finger so yeah there we go guys i mean that is looking at that absolutely fantastic machine but yeah, if you're going to go for one these days, guys, you want to go for the Plus because the Plus does have that screen, that touchable screen, guys, the touching glory that was needed on this model already. But back onto this one, guys. And uh, oh, look at that. I've just brought that up. Let's take it that way. There we go. Yeah, this one is just gorgeous. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I've got to get myself some more memory cards and get this up and running as well. I think it's become a little bit, um, yeah, <laughs> put aside because of my heavy use of the uh, the Game Force and uh, one of the Ambernics that I use so heavily, guys, or many of the Ambernics I use so heavily. But don't let me detract from this wonderful thing. It is wonderful. Don't let it put you off. Um, the Retro Pocket was already brilliant, obviously, as I showed you already with this one. Of course, it's a completely different uh, way around here. We're in portrait mode here, whereas with the other two, we're in landscape. This is more like your Game Boy, isn't it? That is for sure. Now, I don't know if there's any life in this thing, but we can try. There we go. You can see that one booting on now. Now, this has actually got the uh, the Retroid uh, Pocket actual firmware running on it. It hasn't been put onto Android, so this is a good chance for me to show you this beautiful screen and the OS for that and what you can expect to see when you put this one on. It does take a little while to boot, as you can see. Let's wait for it a sec, and then it'll be up. Here we go, guys. So, yeah, it looks very, very different to the Android one. And it's easy enough to change it to the Android system. And uh, yeah, but again, look at that beautiful screen. Big screen, absolutely perfect no matter angle you have it. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And like I said, <laughs> it's the Stormtrooper. What a fantastic color. So some people are big fans of this, you know, Game boy isk kind of uh, handheld. And then, of course, some people just love this one as well. And, uh, yeah, with his Atomic Purple. Having the uh, Game Boy Advance way of holding it in the landscape, guys, does make a big difference. And it doesn't matter whether you choose this one or you choose this one. They're both gorgeous. And, of course, there's a lot of other colours out there as well that you could choose. But, again, look at the screen on these. They are just magical, fantastic, fantastic screens on them. Uh, yeah, obviously, this one wins brownie points for me. Not only because my dear friend sent it to me, but because it's gorgeous and with its atomic purple and those buttons and what have you. The, the little subtle differences that I love so much. But again, look, the screen is just to die for on these machines. On all three of them, the screen is to die for. So yes, guys, have you got a Retroid Pocket? Do you want a Retroid Pocket? Do you want one of the newer ones? Because let's face it, you've got Retroid Pocket 3, you've got Retroid Pocket this, that, and the other, the flip and all sorts, guys. Yeah, there is one now, guys, that is absolutely wonderful because it is very much like a DS. It has got a flip screen on it, and that is a gorgeous thing. And of course, there's other systems as well made by Retroid. But... You can pick these up cheap enough these days. I'll tell you what, it is definitely still worth picking them up. Rather go for the plus maybe because of the touchscreen. But if you don't, you don't. And you will get used to using this one. And believe you me, guys, I've spent enough time with all of these systems, all three of them, that I'm still in love with them, even though they're a bit of a walk around with the old uh, non-touchscreen. So yeah, guys, let me know in the comments. Have you owned one of these in the past? Do you own one now? Are you still contemplating whether to pick one up now they've become quite cheap to grab? Let me know in the comments, guys. I'd love to read your comments. And with that, I'm going to wrap things up and I'm going to say the usual. If you're not subbed already, please drop me a sub. Give me a bummy thumbs up if you feel that way inclined. And of course, tap the bell icon and the all icon to get any future notifications whatsoever. 
And again, guys, if you love retro emulation and consoles, you will love the group on Facebook that I have, and it is called the Retro Emulation and Consoles Fan Group with over 5,000 members, guys. You can't go wrong. Tons of content from system unboxing, system reviews, emulation performance, tech help videos, and a whole lot more. And the world's greatest admin team to boot. So yeah, guys, if you love all that, link to below. And then, guys, I also have my UK Crowd Gaming Facebook group as well. We'll cover everything gaming from the dawn of gaming right the way through to PS5 and everything that came in between. Again, guys, if you just absolutely love all the different periods of time of gaming, there is a ton of content on there for you from system, again, reviews. There is all sorts, guys, because other YouTubers put their videos up there as well. And you can talk about any period of time. So if you just love that, also linked below. And finally, guys, I have my channel membership for as little as 99 pence a month. You can become a member of the UK Kraut family. This will give you access to the members only videos. Of the I'm going to say off videos in, choose and goodbye. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye bye.